Hi, welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, who I think you'll know by now, but if this is your very first talk from me, I'm author of several Tudor history books. Okay, where am I taking you today? Well, I'm taking you back to Elizabeth I's reign. On this day in Tudor history, the 7th of October, 1577, Author, poet, courtier and soldier George Gascoigne died in Stamford in Lincolnshire. He was buried in Stamford at St Mary's Parish Church. He was in his early 40s. Now, as well as being a soldier, a mercenary who fought in the Low Countries in the early 1570s, George Gascoigne was a very gifted poet In fact, he's listed as one of the most important Tudor poets, along with the likes of Sir Thomas Wyatt the Elder, Henry Howard, Earl of Surrey, and also Philip Sidney. Gascoigne's works included A Discourse of the Adventures of Master F.J., The Supposes, A Hundredth Sundry Flowers, and The Posies of George Gascoigne, Esquire. But Gascoigne was also hired in 1575 by Robert Dudley, Earl of Leicester, who, of course, uh, was the favourite of Queen Elizabeth I and a man who I think she uh, truly loved. Gascoigne was hired by him to provide the entertainment for Elizabeth I's visit to uh, Dudley's home, Kenilworth Castle. Gascoigne recorded uh, this entertainment in a book published in 1576 called The Princely Pleasures at the Court at Kenilworth. That is to say, the copies of all such verses, proses or poetical inventions and other devices of pleasure as were there devised and presented by sundry gentlemen before the Queen's Majesty in the year 1575. Now, if you've listened to my uh, other talks uh, on books and authors, you'll know that the Tudors really did like their long titles. That's a great title for a book. George Gascoigne wrote a mask to be performed for the Queen at Kenilworth. It was called Zabetta, uh, which is a play on the name Elizabeth. Historian Susan Duran points out in her book Monarchy and Matrimony, The Courtships of Elizabeth I, that in this story, Zabetta had been lost to Diana, the goddess of chastity, for near 17 years past, the number of years since Elizabeth's accession, and during this time had resisted the entreaties of Juno, the goddess of marriage, that she married. Juno found Zabetta, who was then restored to Diana, and a debate ensued about whether the nymph should continue in her chastity. The mask ended with the goddess Iris extolling the virtues of marriage in a direct appeal to the queen. Now, that's not at all subtle, is it, as a theme for a mask for Elizabeth I's visit to Kenilworth Castle, home of Robert Dudley, Earl of Leicester. It was a marriage proposal from Robert Dudley. But, unfortunately, the mask ended up being cancelled due to inclement weather. So, George Gascoigne ended up running alongside the Queen as she was leaving the castle, telling her the story of his mask, giving her a brief rundown, the plot of the mask. Susan Duran writes of how Gascoigne told Elizabeth about the virgin nymph Zabetta who had rejected all her suitors and turned them into the trees and rocks that the Queen could see around her and how she had turned one of them, deep desire, into a holly bush with pricks to prove the restless pricks of his private thoughts. As Elizabeth went past the holly bush, Deep Desire spoke to her, telling her of his love for Zabetta and pleading with the Queen to stay at Kenilworth. Live here, good Queen, live here. You are amongst your friends. Their comfort comes when you approach and when you part, it ends. Obviously, Deep Desire was the Earl of Leicester and Duran says that the pricks of the holly bush symbolised his undiminished sexual desires. 
This shortened performance, though, was not successful in changing Elizabeth's mind about marriage. But I always wonder how Elizabeth would have felt if she'd seen the full mask performed in front of her. Would it have changed anything? Would it have changed history? Who knows? Now I'm going to leave you with a poem by George Gascoigne. As the Guardian newspaper explained in its poem of the week poem of the week article on this poem, it's about infidelity. It starts with a woman who's been accused of infidelity asking so what before the narrator, the wronged man, enters the poem. Now, this is not related at all to Queen Elizabeth I and the Earl of Leicester. It's just a poem by George Gascoigne that I thought I'd leave you with to commemorate, uh, to remember this uh, Tudor poet. And if I did, what then? Are you aggrieved, therefore? The sea hath fish for every man, and what would you have more? Thus did my mistress once amaze my mind with doubt and popped a question for the nonce to beat my brains about. Whereto I thus replied, each fisherman can wish that all the seas at every tide were his alone to fish. And so did I in vain, but since it may not be, let such fish there as find the gain and leave the loss for me. And with such luck and loss I will content myself till tides of turning time may toss such fishes on the shelf. And when they stick on sands that every man may, every man may see, then will I laugh and clap my hands as they do now at me. What I actually really love about that poem is Gascoigne's use of idioms that we know today. The sea hath fish for every man saying there are more fish in the sea and may toss such fishes on the shelf well that's like being left on the shelf they're phrases that we recognize that we know and I just love that link so on this day in 1577 just two years after those entertainments at Kenilworth Castle um, Elizabethan poet George Gascoigne died and So yes, I just wanted to leave you with that poem in his memory. Thank you for joining me today. You can subscribe to this channel by clicking just round about there somewhere. There's a big subscribe button. Uh, You can like this video as well. And you can hit the bell to be notified as videos go live. But uh, trust me, they do come on a daily basis. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.